it seems that we have finally reached the last section of our course. It has been quite a long journey, hasn't it? Within this section you are going to learn how to gather the insights coming from your exploratory data analysis within one single report. First of all, let me give you some greater detail about R Markdown, which is the technology we are going to employ for our reporting activity. R Markdown is, by its own creator's words, a notoring framework for data science. It allows you to seamlessly integrate within a single document markdown chunks to be employed to describe the analysis you have performed and add comments to their results, chunks of our code to be dynamically executed when the document is rendered, interactive widgets based on our code to be employed to increase the level of interaction of the reader with your analysis. And this is extremely useful within at least two possible use cases. The first one is you need to document on the go the analysis you are performing with descriptions, notes and comments. And then there is the production of the final reports based on the results of your analysis. Avoiding the, that really error-prone process of copying and pasting results from the coding environment to the reporting environment. And this is especially useful if the underlying data change and you're exposed to the risk of having the report out of date with regard to the updated final results. Let me show you now how a basic R Markdown document looks like. We will tap into this report to include the results of the EDA we have been performing until now within the next video. As you probably remember, when we first created all the scripts to be employed for the ADA activity, we also created a new document named 07 Results Report. This is exactly the R Markdown document we are going to use for our reporting activity. So, you can find it already opened here. Let's have a quick look up. The first line that welcomes us within the document is actually a YAML code. And this old chunk here is YAML code. These lines specify a set of options that will be taken into consideration when rendering the document. First of all, you can find here the title and the author of the document. Then there is the date and the file format you want to obtain once the R Markdown file will be rendered. Let me show you the rendering process quickly so that you can get this and understand what I'm talking about. So we just press this button, night, then you can see here the R Markdown job going on and then there is this viewer pane where you find the document rendered. So you can see here the title, the author, the date, then there are messages related to packages loading. We are going to, to get into details later about this. And then you find text. Also this will be analyzed in detail later. Then there are other outputs that we'll see next during the next video. But this is basically this is the output. You can also see it within a browser. So this is the same output. And then there are also other options. Just other options. Let's try the alternative options. You can set it in from here. So for instance, Word document is working here. You can see. And here it is. A word document from the same single R Markdown document, and then the PDF, and here it is the PDF with with always the same content. Okay, then we will get back within the next videos to the alternative ways of sharing your report. At the moment, I would just like to let you understand that the R Markdown document is not the final output but it is by itself something that can be rendered into other formats to share the results in the most convenient way. We have here the 
let's move to the document then so we have here the first chunk of text which is markdown text to be precise this is a markup language which has got conventions which will be taken into consideration when rendering the document this first line here will for instance be rendered as an heading of level 2 because this is specified from those two hashtags and if you are familiar with the HTML this is an h2 heading then we have a plain text which will be rendered as a normal paragraph and once we will have completed this quick tour I will point you out the most useful syntax elements so that you can get a bit used with this really document really useful document after the first chunk of text you find the first chunk of our code also here let me show you better this code will be executed during the rendering process and the output will be included within the resulting document and you can see it within the viewer pane we are just going to obtain once again so here it is the output you see is just saying to us that loading the the library so is the output of that code once it is run so please notice that the full set of parameters can be set to tell the rendering engine how to handle code chunks including them within these breaks these are the really basics of our markdown components on which we will build up during next videos to create our eda report okay then let me show you the most relevant syntax elements of our markdown so that you can get up and running you can find anyway more details within the website of john gruber which is the creator of this powerful markup language noted for you the website here first of all headings this is actually quite simple every time you add an hashtag you increase the deepens of your heading then you have hyperlinks and valid list and within hyperlinks you can separately indicate which is the text you want to be showed and which is the actual link this is the actual link and this is the text that you want to be showed finally we have also some other options related to format like bold we have just to surround that way your text you want to make bold and this italics is here with just one so you have learned within this video what is our markdown and what you can use it for you have also learned which are the basic components of the markdown syntax to use this language conveniently so to be ready to start using it